This week on Sweet Ruka, stuff breaks. And it is broken. Whoa, hurry, 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 hurry. We get a visit from the Coast Guard. We go sailing with our intercourse day and Curtis gets his hands dirty. How's it going? Hey everyone, we're Sweet Ruka and we're here to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. I'm Kate and this is Curtis and Roxy the dog. We're racers turned cruisers, and we are ready to do some serious sailing. So click subscribe and come along for the ride. When the day is longer than the night, the, is the road ahead is clear and in the light, is clear. don't be late. Good evening, everyone. We are here in Hillsboro in Kiriakou, North Island of Grenada, and the swell is out of the north, and so it's like rock -a bye baby. We were going back and forth, back and forth, so we decided to try our stern anchor for the first time, and we didn't quite get it how we liked it, so we did a swell bridle as well as a stern anchor, so we kind of have like a three-line setup, and uh, I'm going to show you guys that. Back here first, you can see we've got the stern anchor. Curtis drove that out in the dinghy. And then we've got the swell bridle coming back to midship here. And that's attached to our anchor chain, which you can see going down right here. One, two, three lines coming out of the boat. Now we're facing into the swell and it feels pretty good. We can get things done without stuff flying everywhere. Hopefully we can get a pretty good night's sleep. All right, and that's our setup for today. Sadly, a few days later, after many big puffs, our Dyneema stern line snapped with a bang. Luckily, we had attached a buoy in case this exact thing were to happen. All right, you guys, I was downstairs working on a video, and all of a sudden, Curtis and I heard a huge snap, crackle, pop, and it was the stern anchor line. We were shocked, but I knew right away, because I imagined, what would it sound like if the anchor line broke? It was our first time using the stern anchor, so we really weren't sure what to expect. The Dyneema's pretty strong, and sure enough, fortunately, we remembered to tie a buoy to the stern line, so it is not lost. It will be really easy for us to retrieve, and I'm also really thankful that it happened during the day. So here we have what's left of the stern line and our cockpit winch here. The swell was getting pretty bad, which made it difficult to sleep and accomplish tasks. So we decided to up anchor. However, when it was time to go, we noticed our anchor chain had now wrapped around a big rock since our boat had changed positions. I swam down to help free it before heading off towards the busy and well-protected anchorage of Tyrrell Bay. We planned to avoid the swell there and join other cruisers for a hike around the island. There is Sandy Island there, and without starting the motor, we just decided to unfurl the jib. It's pretty much dead downwind, so it's hard to keep them full, but we figure we, we'll get there when we get there. This is what Hillsboro looks like on a sunny day, as opposed to when we came in and it was raining. Very pretty, but some microburst puffs that come off those hills. What you thinking? It's 50 feet deep, and I can pretty much almost see the bottom right now. It's kind of cool. Have fun, Roxy! <laughs> All right, Kate's going to get in the dinghy, put the motor up while we're moving. Let's pull it in. Here, give it to me. Good job. Did you see what the back was doing when you were back there? No. Oh my god. Oh, Ready? Man. Okay. Watch out, watch out. Yay! Good job, babe. Oh. Here's your camera back.
We arrived in the alluring anchorage of Terrell Bay very quickly. There are many sunny days in the small island of Kariaku, but there is also rainy season, and later that evening after we anchored, we were greeted with another boat wash. Funny thing is, we were supposed to go on a hike today, but we canceled because we wanted to get some video work done and some boat maintenance done and just really hunker down and get some work done. And uh, good thing we canceled because it is pouring. The rain only lasted a short while and the beauty of Kariaku continued in the form of a complete rainbow behind Sweet Ruka. We were getting ready to go into town early the next morning, and were moving about the cockpit when we saw the Grenada Coast Guard patrolling about. We must have been easy targets on the deck as they puttered over to us and asked to see our papers. We just got a little visit by the Grenada Coast Guard this morning. They're doing a good job keeping everybody safe and making sure people don't come in and out illegally via COVID-19. So they just checked our papers real quick. They are very nice, polite, and professional, and did a wonderful job. And Roxy thought that they were her friends, didn't you? You thought they were your friends. <laughs> hey guys, Curtis here with Sweet Ruka. Today we are going to install our inner four stay. It's made out of Dyneema, and we connect it here to our inner four stay mount uh, with this turnbuckle. The really cool part about the inner four stay is it allows us to run hanked on sails, uh, which are quite a bit smaller. So we have a stay sail that we can put up on there. That's a really, really great sail for sailing in higher winds. It's a great day to kind of test out our safety and high wind sail setups. That way we know that they work and it's good practice for when the ship hits the stay on. It's time to go get our sail, hank them on here, and go sailing. Okay, let's do this. Once the bottom of the sail is tacked up on front, we add the jib sheets to the jib cars and then hank on the rest of the sail to the inner force day. This is our inner force day halyard right here. Also Dyneema. We really wanted as much strength as possible in this system. Oh, there's a dog. The integrated shackle for the halyard and the Dyneema Hanks were designed so that the sail could be easily and quickly attached without losing its strength and strong winds. We are at anchor here in Turtle Bay in Kariaku. We're going to sail off the anchor today without starting our engine. We don't really need to charge the batteries. The wind isn't too bad. The conditions are good. There's not a whole lot of boats all around us. So it's going to be a nice day just to sail right off the anchor. What you just saw me do was unsoft shackle the mainsail halyard from the sail bag. We keep it just a little bit aft on the mainsail bag. That way it stops the halyard from clanking against the rig and the wind and also cuts down a lot on chafing, extending the life of your halyard and making you sleep a little bit easier with less noise. Pro tip. As you can see, the old Ruka, she's got a lot of lines. The cockpit can get pretty busy pretty fast. So we've color coordinated most of our lines so we can quickly identify what they're for. 
We had added a third reef to the mainsail, but had yet to install the new line for it, and since we would most likely be using a third reef with our staysail, a calm day seemed like the perfect day to test them out together. We've got all of our reef lines ready to run, pretty much ready to hoist this main and get out on the water. We've got our sail up, we're officially sailing, but we've got to pick the anchor up first. So I'm going to sail the boat up while Kate points to where the anchor goes, and she's going to press the up and down buttons. We're going to bring this anchor up, we're going to take off off that way sailing. Tyrol Bay and you can see we've got our great heavy wind set up even though it is not heavy air right now we thought it would be a good time to get it out and practice we still need to hook up our third reef we've got that all hooked up now and the best time to do that is when it's nice and light and the boat is under control so we've got that out and we thought we might as well hoist up the stay sail as well to see how the pair look together as we will probably fly them together in 30 plus knots of wind maybe up to 45 knots and as we're looking at it we may even want to add a fourth reef and a storm jib for really 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 big breeze for a smaller sail configuration today we've got about 13 knots of breeze and we're going just over four knots so this configuration is pretty good for cruising i think it's time for me to get a cocktail in my hand Curtis walked up and down the deck to take photos of the new sail set up so he could take a closer look later. The boat felt well balanced and we were looking forward to paradise. It was time to get dressed up and celebrate our relationship anniversary with some mango cheesecake. We've got the engine running, time for the mainsail to go away also. Once again, super easy. Because we've got the bag, because we've got the reefs in, pretty much just drops right in his bag. Great job, babe. All right, we did it. Now it's time to anchor and go to the bar. The wind had picked up a bit and there were quite a few shallow spots on the chart. So we took down the sails and hunted around for a sandy spot to anchor. Paradise Beach Club was right in front of the anchorage and a short dinghy ride onto the beach would take you there. If you ever find yourself in Kiriakou, this is a spot for locals and yachties alike. Gourmet meals made with fresh local ingredients with the most amazing views. Cruisers can join on Wednesdays to paint their vessel name to the wall, and weekends there is often live music to enjoy a little wine. It was a perfect spot to celebrate eight years together. In the midst of our day. Oh, it's a spot. It's so good, huh? Takes more than will Among the things I like to do Craving is one 
After a wonderful evening at Paradise Beach Club, to continue the celebration, we headed over to Deep for Diving to catch a deep water wreck dive and do some lionfish hunting. You're not going to believe what we saw inside the shipwreck. What are we doing today? We're going diving! It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to the troll wreck site here in Cariacu, Grenada, and we're going to try a decompression dive. So, wish us luck. Here we go. Let's go diving! We're going to go to the troll. What's so good about the troll? It's deep and it's big. So we like to do deep penetration. <laughs> yes. Nora was the queen of lionfish hunting, and she was getting ready to lead the hunt. So we all took our torches and spears and headed towards the wreck, but you won't believe what we saw when we got there. Other than lionfish hunting, here are a few of our favorite shots from diving with Deeper. When we were done with the dive, we headed back to Deeper to check out our catch. Nora and I got to dry off the most refreshing way possible, the back of a pickup truck. When we got back to the shop, Nora showed us how to clean the catch. As she was explaining, she had mentioned she had never been stung, but she forgot to knock on wood first. Push down, the hand just breaks the uh, little pocket and the venom goes up. I've never been stung, but you can ask me. Yeah. During a dive later with us, she got a bad sting in her hand and had to be taken back to shore. It turns out the fish hit a nerve and her hand will be like this forever. To see the entire lionfish sting experience, head over to the D for Diving YouTube channel and give a look to episode 8. You wanna try one, Kate? You know how to do it? Do it, babe. First lionfish. Uh, hey everybody, I am really struggling at getting the guts out of these lionfish here, but they are an invasive species. So we are going to catch them and we are going to eat them and they're actually pretty tasty, which I guess is the one positive thing about them, so. When did you get these? We got them earlier today while diving with Deeper Diving here in Cariacou, Grenada. Is this your first lionfish? This is the first one, first one I caught and first one I'm gutting. <laughs> How did you catch them? questions. I caught him with a spear. I caught him with a spear. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry I haven't been smiling. I'm pretty grossed out. <laughs> I understand. I grin and bear it. Yeah. Did I get him? Did I get him? Can you get some little fish? 
Oh yeah, get the little fishy. <laughs> oh yeah. Digestive. So can you tell us why we hunt these things? Because they're invasive species here in the Caribbean and they have no natural predators here so they just eat anything and they spread very quickly. You have to contain the species because they can basically just destroy uh, ecosystems and everything. Hello sweet Ruka! <laughs> You always find a way to sit on the cushions though, don't you, buddy? Yeah. How's it going? Hey, it's going good back here. Just scaling the lionfish. This is about how I felt when you were filming me cutting all of its guts up. Doing good, babe. Keep up the good work. Got some garlic butter. We have a plate full of lionfish that you saw Kate just get ready to cook. All the way over at D for Diving now. It's time to put the fish on the grill. So, step number one, we kind of cleaned them all, we descaled them, and the next thing that we're gonna do is wrap them up in some tin foil, preheat this grill, and then drop them on. <laughs> the fish is looking at me. All right, we're about to sample our first lionfish catch. This is pretty exciting. Thank you, Adi, for diving again for showing us the ropes a little bit. And great job, Curtis, for descaling them. And here we go. See how they turn out. Mm. Really good. Really good. I think you cooked them perfectly, Curtis. Just a little bit of butter, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper. Very good. Next week on Sweet Ruka, Nora gets a taste of life on top of the water. Sweet Ruka gets cold and Curtis helps a boat in need. <laughs>